This spring we're going to try to test a lot of different attachments as we plant our garden. If you missed the earlier episode, we ran a heavy hitch ripper through the garden, ripped it up, and we indeed did get a big rain after that. Now it's still March here, so we're not ready to plant yet, but this clover and some of the weeds in here is getting bad, so we need to work it again to keep the grass from getting away from us. So today we're trying this uh, Tractor Basics disc harrow that you saw us unbox in the prior episode. Now in contrast with a tiller, when you're using a disc harrow on a really small tractor like this, you have to just think totally differently. Notice that you might immediately say, it's not doing much. Yeah, it's not doing a whole lot in this first pass, but it is cutting it open. Okay, and you'll see in our subsequent passes how that's going to work. Well, you can go a lot faster with a disc harrow, so you just think about it differently, right? You just think I'm going to make multiple passes over the uh, over the uh, garden instead of instead of trying to do it all in one pass. With a tiller, you go really slowly, and you leave it just perfect in one pass, right? We did a little bit of a test over here. We just went back and forth over this um, one one shot at a time, and and you can even tell from from where you are that this, this has actually worked out pretty good over here, right? So after three or four passes, it's gonna be fine. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go straight like this for one pass, and then we're gonna do a little bit of an angle for a pass. As we go along, I'm gonna tell you about some of the challenges we've had with disc harrow in general, and this one in specific. I'm gonna talk about some of the adjustments that we've made. Yeah, this is gonna be good. Faster is better, Dave, flat out. One of the challenges we're having is lifting this disc. We're having a challenge in two ways. First, the three-point hitch is not quite strong enough to lift all of this disc once we got some dirt on it, okay? So you can actually hear the relief valve at certain times. And the second issue is, given where the lift pins are, it will not lift the disc high enough. So we have to use our hydraulic top link to be able to lift it. We suck that hydraulic top link and you'll see it turn like that. That's the only way we're lifting it for both of those approaches. Another area that's different between a disc and a tiller is how fast you go. With a disc, going four to five miles per hour is, is great. Okay, to lift it, Dave puts the back end down, lifts with the three-point hitch, and then tilts it up, right? So he kind of uses a little bit of a, a trick, a little bit of a process to get it to get it lifted up. I think the net result is this disc is probably a little bit too heavy for a one series. Now Dave's running a pass at an angle here. And one benefit of changing the direction a little bit is to kind of level everything a little better. A disc can be a pretty good leveling tool. A tiller doesn't seem to, to move the soil very far and it, it may sometimes even create more humps and stuff than what uh, uh, was there before. But a disc kind of throws that soil and brings it back and it can serve to kind of to level things out a little bit. So. Going at different angles can really help you in that sense. We're just gonna run a few more passes here, probably at different angles, and then we'll get back to you.
Dave, we got a lot of comments in that last video. Not, not so complimentary to me about, uh, about my three-point hitch uh, hookup video that we recently did on this disc. So we took another look at it, and, and here we are. Um, we did indeed move the bolt and collar down to the lower hole. Now, when you get to looking close here, you'll see why I didn't show that in the prior video. Right? I did try it in the last video, didn't we, Christy? Yeah. We just left it out of the video. And of course, naturally, people said, you put it in the wrong hole. Well, we understand. The reason that we put it in this top hole to start was because when we put it in the bottom hole, we have to have these bars leaned forward. Yep, because these are either too long or that's not at the right angle. But the we did it this morning in the shop, and it, it simply will not fit without modifications. So this was our idea. Dave just took a cutoff wheel right here and we just cut off the front of that steel plate right just there. Spaced her, gave her yeah. clearance, yeah. and it's it's still not perfect. No, we got another issue, right? So when we're like that, we notice I'm in the bottom two holes here and you're not supposed to be. That's not the standard hole. One hole up from that is the standard. Oh, you can't see the holes because of the Otis Innovation piece. By the way, the Otis Innovation uh, bracket fits now and was not the problem before. It, it wouldn't fit without it before. But anyway, these are in the bottom holes. They need to be up. If we raise it up one hole, we can't get, we can't get the uh, bottom links to fit. The standard quick hitch specification is in the second hole. Um, that's the way it's supposed to fit. Well, and I'd say I agree with John Deere. They should have never put extra holes there. Just make everybody make it fit the way it's supposed to. Yeah, you realize that the reason they put all those holes there was to try to deal with old attachments. Right. Not to give new people ways of making things not work. Right. I guess we wouldn't be able to use it without the holes in this case, but, but doggone it. People ought to make attachments that just fit. I the completely standard, agree. It's an ASABE spec for how this needs to be. Uh, another comment we got was all quick hitches are different. No, they're not. They're not. The quick hitches are the same. There is a little bit of difference sometimes in the width here. Uh, the hooks are all the same standard as far as how far they are back from this bar. Um, this Ken's hook, Ken's bolt-on hooks top hook is a is a trying to compensate right for some of these attachments that don't. That don't. By the way, we still have Ken's uh, top hook in here. One other comment that we got was you should just throw the quick hitch away and, and run without it. And, and I get that. Usually the very next sentence in, in the comment was, I have a bunch of old attachments, right, and, and I can't use it. I get it. Our job here is, is to try to help things be easier. Absolutely. To the extent that I'm a stickler about quick hitch compatibility, that's being a stickler. There are hundreds of manufacturers you can buy attachments from, right? So if you're interested in a quick hitch, buy one that's quick hitch compatible. If you're not interested, buy, buy one that you don't worry about. I get it, I get it. But I, I, I just simply disagree with the concept that I shouldn't be uh, critical of a, of a non-quick hitch compatible attachment. In my opinion, so that was the first great innovation of tractors was the three point. The second great Harry innovation yeah, was, was great. the quick hitch. Okay. We can unhook this and rehook this literally in seconds. Especially with the power top line. Absolutely. Whereas if it was uh, just a normal three point, I mean, it's got not too much longer, but you know, time is money. I mean, you've got several different attachments here and let's say we wanted to use three things on this field today, it would take us an extra 15 to 20 minutes to do it all. And that's, you know, that adds up over the course of a season, that adds up to a lot of money. There's also some, some pain off and on the tractor, right. um, getting those pins in. If you have really small attachments, you can yank them back here to make them fit. But if you've got big attachments, they aren't moving. No, no, well, and you gotta get back on the tractor and reline things up. I mean, if it goes perfectly, it's three minutes to hook up with a regular three point. If it goes poorly, it's 20 minutes to hook it up, so. Yeah. And then the pain that you saw us going through in the prior episode and off camera this time, is a one-time pain. Right. Right. We can now fit this attachment, although we're still in the wrong holes. Still have to make some adjustments, but if you spend that time, then it's it's a one-time yep. investment. Yep. So to me, a half an hour one time is totally different than, you know, Absolutely. half an hour every attachment or even 10 minutes every uh, uh, attachment that you deal with. 
I got one more comment, and that was you should use Pat's Easy Change. Now, Pat's Easy Change, we have tried it. We have shown it on this channel. They used to be a partner, and they're no longer a partner of ours. Uh, long story there. But anyway, my problem with Pat's Easy Change is twofold. Number one, the bottom couplers uh, are, are sometimes too wide and sometimes too um, difficult to actually attach. Not always. They, they're a, a decent solution some of the time. The other problem I have is that you have to lengthen your top link significantly to compensate for that additional three or four inches that Pat's Easy Change puts on. If you get a power top link or if you get just go buy a second top link that's a little longer, yeah, you can you can deal with that. But I think the point is no uh, solution is perfect. Per personally for me, I did not enjoy Pat's Easy Change. Now what I would like to have is what they have in Europe. The the little thumb clamps that you know they can just pick up and clamp right, right onto the balls in Europe. That's what they use all over the place. Uh, that, I think, is better than a quick hitch. Oliver had that in the 60s, and everybody else moved away from it, so. Same with metric, we don't care for it. I don't have that on the moon. No, they don't, don't have that either on the moon. You know, I, I suspect there are Olivers on the moon, though. Uh, I don't know who built that, that lunar rover, but I don't think it was Oliver. <laughs> <laughs> okay, enough of this. Disc some more, Dave. Sounds good. We need to get this all knocked down so that it's not gonna grow weeds until time till we can plant our garden. Fair enough. So how's it looking so far? Are you keep going I, on it or? I like the looks, I think, going another angle. Just just keep disking, Christy, and I'll be out after lunch. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll do it all day, I don't care. <laughs> Oh, that's not good. Uh, looks like our top and tilt snapped. I guess it was me this time. But yeah, I got to the end. And I went to go raise it, and it picked that side up, and I was like, "That's that's not good." That's not good. And I thought I had a hydraulic issue, and I was like, "No, no, that's all the way in." And then I kind of reached over more and saw it. And was like, "Oh!" I believe this hose hit it here, Dave, and knocked that key out. It's quite possible. Next time we put it in, we'll put it on the inside. Okay. Well, we've bent this uh, side link a little bit. That's yeah. just a project for us. We'll bend that back. Yep. Timing is right anyway. You see what I brought to the rescue? Oh, I do see. It's orange. I like that. Is that bigger than this? That's bigger than this. And I brought it out here because, well, first of all, before I even go to that, did you have any problem pulling the disc with this tractor? Uh, no. I no, I, so. it, it pulled it fine. Yeah. And some people were saying, oh, you won't be able to pull it. Well, even after we've gone multiple passes and you've got it pretty well stirred up, it doesn't have any problem pulling it. No, it's pulling it just fine. Pretty good. The the only section me and Christy were talking about is there's this green bit right here, which is why I was coming this way, that and to make the ends look nice. Yeah. But it's just it that section because it's it's right where you're not going fast enough. Yeah. So, but it looks better than it did. So. But what we did have a problem with was was lift. Right, right. It's not willing to lift it. No. So I went back to the stable and I thought about bringing out the 2038R and then I thought. Here, you we haven't I seen Wimpy it? here in quite some time, Wimpy. so uh, <laughs> so it's it's time. And given that we're kind of disabled here, yep, it's really time. Take her back to the barn, boys. No big deal. This is one aspect of having all those extra hydraulic hoses, right? I mean, there's just so much in there, and it just forced one of those spring keys out, and then eventually the pin comes out. It's a little higher maintenance when you have the top and tilt kit. When you know when you have all those hydraulic hoses in there, it's, there's no way around it. The only way around it would be hard lines that were specific mounted for each thing. But you still have to be able to move when the thing goes up and down and tilts. It's it's a little bit uh, tight, especially on a subcompact, right? It's 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 not very spacious in there. Don't have a power top link, Dave. So yeah, I'm realizing that. Well, I hope this picks it up, otherwise that's really going to suck when we get to the other end of the field. Yeah, you just have to kind of ride here and do this by hand. Now, again, we're in the second hole. Doesn't fit. In this case, we've got some of Ken's quick hitch pins here instead of bolts. 
or maybe this comes with the land pride hitch, I don't know. So we'll lower it again, Dave, and we'll move this hook down too. We shouldn't have to. Next to the bottom hole is where it's supposed to be. I happen to have our two favorite tools, Dave. Yeah. Oh, awesome. One of my favorite tools. When it was in the hole, the next hole higher, it wouldn't go down into these uh, side links, right? So we weren't able to get that to latch right there. So now we should be good. So now we have genuine lift height and we don't know where, we're, where we are here. Probably want that compressed a little bit, but we may not. Okay, let's see where that goes. As a reminder, this is a Land Pride quick hitch, QH15, not the iMatch. It has exactly the same configuration, the same width, the same height. Um, the standard hole is one hole up from the bottom, right? We've had to move it to the bottom. So talking about multiple brands of quick hitches, they're the same. Now this one does have the extended hook. You sometimes have to buy a different extended hook for different brands. But yeah, the, by getting the extended hook, sometimes you can avoid this cutting. Up the edges, yeah. But I think we would have still needed it. Yep. For what we're doing. Absolutely. Now, we did adjust these gangs. We widened the rear gangs by loosening those U-bolts and moving those gangs out, and we put the front gangs a little closer together. He's able to go a little bit faster with this tractor. So he's throwing a little bit of a hump to the middle. We may need to widen the gangs a little more. Honestly, I'll probably not worry about it. We'll just keep doing multiple passes, and I think it's cutting a little deeper each, each pass. It's too bad we can't plant today. It, the garden is just working beautifully. Just wonderful. We can't plant corn in March. Although it is close to Good Friday, we could plant potatoes pretty soon. Oh my. Me and Bullseye can just sit back here and watch, can't we, Bullseye? I'd rather watch with that orange thing. No, 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 just kidding. I like to drive any kind of tractor. Snapped it right off, Dave. <laughs> two for two. Okay, here's what we got broken. This, this is the lift mechanism on the rock shaft. And I think that, I'm not sure exactly what that does. It probably indicates where the rock shaft is. So I wonder if I hold that there, Dave, if you could lift it up. Well, we can give it a try. And then, oh, there it goes. You still good? Yeah. I'm holding that bolt right against that nut behind it. Okay, yeah, we're all the way up. Okay. Oh. Now, why did that? Because it has to up so once you drop it it's not going to do anything it fell off of there right it fell off of there so that so makes it, it thinks it's it thinks it needs to go all the way down two tractors down that one losing the pin i could explain that was because a hose hit the key on the little tractor there but this is a, a genuine part failure here that i don't understand i don't understand why that would ever break i i mean maybe i was yanking on that too hard but did you give know. it a good pull not the last that, time down there, or pull. this time? I mean, I was, I mean, I was no quicker than that. Yeah, okay. Well, it shouldn't break. It looks pretty, well, wimpy. I think we need to quit before you guys cost me a lot more money. Oh, we're going to cost you a lot more we money. Got, we got at least three more tractors we can bust. <laughs> you want this one at the shop, too? Take her back to the barn, boys. Sarah, did we just instantly list it for sale? <laughs> <laughs> Ran when parked. 
Yeah, we planned all this. We planned this so we could try the third brand of quick hitch today. No, you didn't. No, we didn't. Uh, but this is the Tractor Basics quick hitch. Now this one we've already got in the bottom hole. You're doing fine, yeah. Go on back up, yeah. Okay, so this one does not have the extended hook. Which means this won't fit either, will it? Yep, and you know what? I am officially tired of the garden disking project. Oh, uh, we better stop while we're ahead. Ahead? <laughs> You've got a strange way of keeping score. Well, we have more tractors working than not working. <laughs> By just about one or so. <laughs> Still ahead. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're going to have to replace these bolts with uh, those pins from that other one because the nut on this bolt, maybe even the head, it's just too long, is, is rubbing this. Either that or we have to cut some more off of this, okay? So the Tractor Basics disc does not fit the Tractor Basics quick hitch. Weird. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the disking. I actually kind of like the way the garden's been left. Okay, it's a little bit rough. Right. Okay, uh, I wouldn't be ready to plant in it yet, but I think leaving it a little bit rough so that when we get the next rain on it, it should dry a little quicker. Yep. Right? Some of this uh, weeds in here will die. Some of them won't because some of them still have roots attached to it. Right. Them. We'd have probably went over it another time or two. If... I, I noticed there's still some large clops left that I was hoping to get out of there, but... I don't know, me and Christy talked about possibly using the land plane on it just a touch. Land leveler. Land leveler, my bad. Yeah, I think the land leveler would be like a hay rake in this situation. I think you would end up with all that stuff raked into a pile. It's quite possible. Now, a tiller, of course, you know, my favorite attachment in all the world is probably a tiller. Tiller would make short work of it. That would make uh, this powder in a jiffy. But I, I don't know that I really want it powder right now because when the next rain comes, that's just going to make it a road bed. Right, right. So, so I, I think this is not so bad. If it were April, we would be getting the tiller out, planting corn. As it is in March, we're going to be repairing tractors the rest of the day. <laughs> back to the shop. Hey, did we miss anything about the disc? We adjusted the gangs front and back. I think we actually were in pretty good position on those. I like the performance of the disc. It's heavy enough to cut in this soil type. Yeah. Um, one thing I always wish on discs like this, I wish they had a weight bracket. I was thinking the same thing. When you hopped on it with the Johnny, I thought, sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, yeah, when we threw some weight on it uh, with Johnny, that didn't do too bad. Uh, but the problem is if we put weight on it, it won't pick it up. Not with the 1025s. Right, right. It, it would have to be with a bigger tractor. Yeah. Uh, a disc is all about weight, and I did right on the back for one pass to see what it would do. And it, it did better. It cut in better. There's no question about that. So that's why I like the big pull type disc that I run behind Johnny 5, because right. it's heavy enough that a three well, point can't pick it up. Just an observation for me, though, is we're sitting on a three series John Deere. Uh, we're not disking our tire width, I don't believe. We didn't disc with the 3 Series John Deere. This wasn't our first choice, Dave. I'm aware of that, but I'm just saying, but, but this will actually pick it up. Will the 2 Series pick that up? Oh, yeah. OK, all right. The 1 Series, with a little uh, turn of the crank, would do fine. On that note, we're going to go get some lunch. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor time, time with Tim. Tim. I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live, that each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all their toil. This is the gift of God. <laughs> Dave just said that'd get old fast. <laughs> now the other way to do this is that. But still, you have to move your whole foot. I was gonna say, neither one of those is as effective as the, I'm sold on the John Deere. I'm officially sold. Like 10 seconds. Yeah. People wonder why we bought the Kubota here. That's why. <laughs>